Hello, this is Dr. Mark Wireman, and this is a brief overview of the ovarian cycle, uterine cycle, and the associated hormones. The follicular phase begins on day zero and goes all the way to ovulation. The luteal phase is the phase that occurs after ovulation. Follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH, is the hormone that will be at higher levels to stimulate the development of a follicle. Luteinizing hormone, or LH, is another hormone released from the anterior pituitary. This hormone will spike, causing ovulation. It will also help a primary oocyte develop into a secondary oocyte. The ovarian cycle will begin with the rise of FSH. A primordial follicle will turn into a primary follicle, then a secondary follicle, and then a tertiary follicle. At the secondary follicle phase, thecal cells will form. These thecal cells will produce estrogen. Within the follicle, you will have one primary oocyte. This primary oocyte will remain primary oocyte until the tertiary phase when luteinizing hormone levels start to rise. After ovulation, the follicle will turn into the corpus luteum. Corpus luteum will remain for about 10 to 12 days, and then it will turn into the corpus albicans. Estrogen levels will remain relatively low until the fecal cells start making more estrogen. Progesterone levels remain relatively low until the luteal phase when you have the corpus luteum. Progesterone is a steroid or lipid-based hormone, and it's made from the cholesterol in the corpus luteum. The first phase of the menstrual cycle is menses. The next phase is the proliferative phase. The next phase is the secretory phase. During menses, the functional layer of the endometrium will lose its blood supply, so the cells without oxygen will start to die, and you'll have shedding or sloughing off of the endometrial tissue. During the proliferative phase, the endometrial layer begins to build again. Spiral arteries will come back and supply blood to the new tissue. The functional layer of the endometrium will continue to grow in the secretory phase. In addition, uterine glands will secrete mucus, which contains nutrients for a potential zygote. Now for a quick relational overview. When FSH levels are high, it'll pick one primordial follicle to be developed that month. Primordial follicle will develop into a primary follicle, then a secondary follicle, and then finally a tertiary follicle. Ovulation would be the next step. During follicular development, the oocyte inside will be developing as well. The primary oocyte will develop into a secondary oocyte due to luteinizing hormone in the tertiary follicle phase. The thecal cells found in the secondary follicle phase will create androstenedione. dione. This will ultimately create estrogen through the enzyme aromatase. As you can see here, estrogen levels will rise and this will have an effect on the release of luteinizing hormone. This effect will occur when estrogen levels are high enough for 36 hours above a certain threshold. This will cause luteinizing hormone release to spike and actually cause ovulation. During ovulation, a secondary oocyte is released. After ovulation, the follicle will turn into the corpus luteum, which contains lots of cholesterol. This cholesterol will be converted into progesterone. Progesterone levels will remain high until the corpus luteum turns into the corpus albicans 10 to 12 days later. Once this occurs, progesterone levels will decrease. Now let's discuss the levels of estrogen and progesterone and their effect on the menstrual cycle. During menses, the levels of estrogen and progesterone are low. This causes the sloughing off of the functional layer of the endometrium. Tissue and blood is lost in menstruation. Estrogen levels will rise as thecal cells develop. This estrogen will go to the uterus and cause a proliferative phase or the building up of the functional layer of the endometrium. In class, we call this fluffing up of the pillows because we're getting ready for a potential baby. After ovulation, progesterone levels will rise. Progesterone will continue the fluffing of the pillows or the building of the functional layer of the endometrium at the uterus. It will also stimulate the secretion of mucus, which will have a lot of nutrients for the potential baby. If there is no fertilization and no zygote formed, the corpus luteum will turn into the corpus albicans 10 to 12 days after ovulation. Progesterone and estrogen levels will decrease, and the menses phase will begin all over again. Thank you for watching, and I hope this helps you.